Good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. Mr. Chairman, before you start, I would like to make a statement. Uh, in regards to the complaints that are fly flying around town and out of town and everywhere else, what happened at that March 5th meeting in no way, shape, or manner was to intimidate anyone, embarrass anyone. And uh, since then, I have talked to the owners, I have talked to the contractor, and to talk to them where they or their families intimidated or ashamed or anything about it. And they said no. I was very supportive from day one with this project, and I'm supported, uh, very supportive of, of the project today. Out of a population of 5,120 people, there's a handful of complaints, and out of 3,894 voters, again, a handful of complaints. I've served on other elected boards, and no matter how this board or any other board votes or talks or says something, there's always somebody that doesn't like it. There's no way that anyone can vote in today's world that everybody's going to be happy. And if you try to appease everybody, you're not going to get anything done. I come from the corporate world, not the municipal world. The corporate world doesn't spend other people's money. They spend their money. They know how to get the job done. And that's the way I do things. Whether the board is upset of it, they have given me no indication that they are. And I leave my door open all the time for anyone to come anytime, any day. I don't care what hour you want to call me. I'm there. And if you don't care for me, tell me that. Everybody has a right for their opinion. And I learned that a long time ago. You just, you don't stub your nose about someone that you think they're not intelligent. They may say something that <coughs> they see out of their eyes that you don't. And that's true over and over again. And again, if somebody's offended, I apologize to you. But in, in my heart, there's no intention of any wrongdoing, or will there be anything wrongdoing. I'm 73 years old. I dedicated most of my adult life to this town of Hadley. And that was to save the taxpayers money so all of us, the, the young, the old, can reside in this town without being taxed and forced to leave out of this town. So that's my statement, and I'm sticking to it. Thank you, Mr. Mishkowski. Mr. Pellicio, you're up first. Yes. <clears throat> the Smith Bowl House we currently have under construction. We're in the final phase. We weren't able to, at the time, a site plan come in for a sign approval. We didn't know what they wanted to put on the building at the time. We're proposing a 38 inch by 128 inch, which is roughly 32 square foot sign. We go on the front. It will not be illuminated. The colors will be a dark blue, because this is a basically the color of metal roof you over the bridge in white. Okay. So it's not going to stand out. You're not going to really see it as much when you go to the UMass sign, which is twice the size. What, wait, what, what way is that sign facing? It's facing toward the UMass boathouse. <coughs> if you're looking down from the property going, I mean, is it facing north, south, east, or west? North. North. Facing north. Okay, so that's the kind of facing. If you go towards Northampton, you might see it. If okay. You go towards Hadley, you won't. Okay. At all. So from Route 9, you can see that? It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's quite a ways down. But, but, but kind of facing Route 9, if you would. Yes. Okay. Mr. Pelosio. Yes, sir. Why didn't you bring a color print in? What does that look like? It's, I don't have a color print of the sign. It's a dark blue background with a white lettering Smith Road. Okay. I was just asking that question. Yeah. And there's no illumination. Oh, it's that one Russell Street? Yes, one Russell Street. Could it be Smith School rowing? Yeah, I'll make a motion to, uh, to approve the sign. Second. You want to see a file? You can have yeah. it. I you second that motion. That's the only one I have. Okay. Okay. Second. No, 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 yeah. Motion <coughs> second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night, Gary Boy. Tyler Gomet. 
Gilmet? Gilmet, yes. Right. This is my first time in front of the planning board. I'm not familiar with how things go. Um, I own a brewing company. This is for a Brewmaster Jack. Uh, what is it? Brewmaster Jack. We've been around uh, about eight years now. And I uh, just contacted a uh, landlord recently on uh, Middle Street. He had a property for lease. And I uh, just printed out of it. Wow. And had talked with him about the possibility of, of building a burn facility there. Is that the Bazaar building? It's a, a duplex with a barn attached. Uh, we'd be looking to lease out the barn. It's a three foot yeah, basement. That's, that's, that's Bazaar garage, right? Yeah. 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 Kind of bad with the quarters. Yeah. Um, so I, I went and uh, spoke to the licensing coordinator and the building inspector. They both told me to come here and, and talk to the planning board and, and see if there's any objections or. If it's zoned properly, uh, I'm, I'm kind of just looking to see what the next steps are to uh, go so forward. What are you going to be using it as? Well, we would um, produce some <coughs> beer there and hopefully have a small tap room on the ground level floor. Uh, it would be a very small production. We The way we produce now is under contract at Crewmasters Tavern in Williamsburg. So we don't own any of the equipment. We rent it on a per batch basis, pay them the fee to use it and then we distribute through wholesalers. So what I'd be looking for is a retail uh, location where we can sell direct to consumer. So this is going to be a brewing place or a selling place? Uh, both. Well, yeah. I know micro this is a micro brewery yes. essentially. Yes. They fall into a special category in zoning. I don't remember what it is. I don't know if we have. Is there any, gonna, any kind of smells going to be radiated out from this? No, no. Uh, most of the, the smell that you associate with the brewery is, is from boiling. We would boil off site at this contract facility in Williamsburg where we produce the house and then ship it in. Uh, a, year, a year or so ago, we approved a brewery up on Russell Street. Yes. Yeah. Right? Well, a tap room. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, that, 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 that's a not a brewery. That's no. not a brewery. There's a brewery there. No, no, no. He just serves. No, the, the brewery was the. Uh, they have one in Florence. Yeah. The tap room is just is just a, just a bar. I thought Barry we Roberts a brewery. No, Barry Roberts, where he's going to sell the uh, the, see, the the small I don't know, growlers. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, that was um, was in the center of Amherst. Point of blank on the name. Uh, is this the garage there? Is that the rails? The garage? No, uh, there is the garage. So if you if you were to walk out of the back of this building, Where's, uh, is the garage there, here? Gra is, uh, the, also, this is not the garage. So, no. Oh, this is the actual bar backside the of, of the barn yeah. of, the, of yes. the house. Correct. Yeah. And so I just outlined the barn area in red. By way of clarification, what's the red outline? Is that where the brewery is going to go? So this is the barn where the residence. Yes. There's a little yes. garage right yep. here. Where and this is the house. Correct. Yeah. Is there any in between? Protection Parking. Where are you going to park? That's going to require some kind of proof. <coughs> okay, so parking yeah. is going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. This is a pre-existing non-conforming use as a house. Now you're going to put a business in there, so mm -hmm. that's going to be a tough call. Yeah, you, you need site plan approval. Okay. For sure, because if you're, it's not a business today, so it's a change of use. Right, and if you're going to be boiling stuff, you, you would need oh, we, the we approval would. from the fire, fire chief if you're going to do anything like that. Yeah, we wouldn't be boiling, it, boiling yeah. there. That's what I was saying, that we boil off site. You got sewer hookup? Well, that's, yeah. There is a sewer there. there, in there, but there, I, don't, sewer there. I don't know. Yeah, there is sewer there. Okay. So, so Even if it wasn't there, you could use injector pipe, pump, and pump it. So you're right. Uh, right out to yeah. Route 9. So this is going to be more wholesale than retail? Oh, no, no, more retail than wholesale. More retail. Dude, that's, we operate now as, as a wholesale. Oh, wow. We're just we're looking for a retail component. Where, where's your fracking going to be? Right. So that's what we were just saying, that yet to be determined. Uh, the property manager, who I spoke to a couple of weeks ago, um, I guess owns the property next door, too, which has a big backyard. He thought that it might be zoned in a way that he could uh, put a parking lot back there, but he wasn't sure. Um, so this is all zone business, because it's, it's just zone business from Route 9 up to the, old, okay. up to the bike path. Okay. okay, so you're in a business zone. However, um, parking is, for that site to say it's tight would probably be an understatement. Correct, and, and I can't uh, 
say strongly enough how small this tap room would be. Um, yeah. with the, the main goal is to have a place where we can sell cans and bottles to go. And then if we can have a tap room on top of that, great. Yeah, the, uh, well, you know, as long as there's a business on, you still need the parking area, whether or not you're going to have, you know, Business zone requires parking area, whether it's two for one, ir irrespective of everything else. Okay. Is there any room for you to put parking in off of, off of Middle <coughs> this way? That's what I talked to the property manager about. He thought there was a way that he could do that because he owns the, the property next door as well. I, really, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to hire somebody competent to look over the site mm -hmm. yeah. and go through the zoning bylaw and see how it can be met to okay. meet, meet, meet all the various aspects of the zoning bylaw. The parking is the okay. Um, um, okay. And, and would I come back with the site plan to propose? Yeah, the, the first thing before you get into too much money as far as a whole lot of stuff is, you know, get, mm -hmm. have them look at the site and your use and et cetera. He used Randy Eisner, so Randy. Oh, no, this is from the property manager. Yeah. Randy, this guy right here, he does that all the time. Okay. Yeah, there, there's several companies, a lot of companies that do that. Randy is one of them. Right here. So you could go around and, you know, talk to a couple of different companies and see, get, obviously, mm -hmm. get, a, get a price on doing a preliminary and then come back to us with a preliminary, mm -hmm. depending on whether you can meet the requirements of the zoning, and before you, like I said, before you invest a lot of other money, yeah. see, get the preliminary idea or the preliminary plan, mm -hmm. and then we can discuss. <coughs> that. So I would, I would go to say Randy, ask for a quote on. on if if you tell him what you want to do, mm -hmm. he, you know, there, there's just again, he, there's one of several, he's one of several companies that mm -hmm. do that. You know, there's Mark Arnold in Northampton, Berkshire Design. Um, you know, there's, there's a few of them that will do that. So I don't want to say go to Randy. I don't want to say yeah, something yeah, yeah, like no, no, I you. Yeah. Just want to make sure you're clear on yeah. that. But any of those several companies that do that, they're familiar with their zoning bylaws, what is the minimum requirement, mm -hmm. and you can get a price out of them and go from there. Okay. And then come back with a preliminary, and then we can look at it and give you a good idea. Yeah, you've got a pretty good chance of meeting the bylaw. Okay. Or not. Okay, so bef before he even produces a plan, I would, I would come... Go, go, no, to see, go to see one. Get get somebody. Go, get, get him go to see one of those those uh, businesses. <coughs> tell them basically this this plan, <coughs> what you want to do, mm -hmm. and you want a preliminary plan as far as well, it, can it meet the zoning bylaw. Okay. And they'll know. They do this all the time. Yeah. They, right. they know what they have to do. They yeah. know what we're looking at. <coughs> okay. What if what if you had an agreement with a, a butter about that proposed parking lot? Is that a consequence? Let's find out whether it fits at all. Yes. Uh, right. Yeah, but okay. it's certainly not going to fit without it. Right. Well, we don't know that. Wow. We don't know that. Let them do that. Let them make that decision and, and study. Okay. But okay. is is it is it right for one partial to lease another partial for parking for that? Is no, that is not. That's not allowed. Not currently allowed. Right, because that's what so he's the, talking about. So, well, the question is, will this lot support the proposed right. business? Right. Let's find out. This, yes. this is, you don't have enough information. You can get the information you need. Okay. So that's step one. Okay. Let's find out if it, if it will work, if it can be made to work, All even right. close. Yep. All right, so I'll, I'll get that site coming and I'll do that. There you go. Good luck. Thank hey, you. We meet the first third Tuesday or Monday. You can just walk in. Leave on a, on a, uh, unannounced and just sign in and give the plan when you're ready. Okay. We can talk about it. Thank you very much. Okay. Good luck. Thanks. Josh Klein. Good evening. Um, I'm here on behalf of WS Development. Uh, we own and operate at Mountain Farms Mall. As you guys are familiar, we're working on the Alparce redevelopment. Currently, um, we're currently under construction. We're hoping to turn over to our tenants in June and July. Um, we're really excited. We're aiming to have tenants open as early as fall 2019. Um, so we've come to the point where a big component of the design is going to be signage. We're working with our tenants, our retailers, our restaurant right now to kind of develop the package. And we wanted to kind of come to the board and get a little feedback um, to relay to these tenants to kind of help guide the design. And, and kind of keep everything on track in terms of timing. So one of we kind of this is the the rendering that we previously presented to the board that's been approved, and this design um, 
was really intended to be for internally illuminated signage. Um, we understand that the supplemental amendment, um, that, is, that is not the case. We're not allowed to do that. We understand the bylaw. Um, it is not permitted. However, we're seeking kind of feedback from the board today on if this would be kind of a path we could continue down and relay to our tenants and kind of get approval to do in terms of the signage at this, loca at this location. I would say I am 100% against internally illuminated sign. Mm -hmm. And if you go for a zoning variant to the ZBA, I will personally go to the ZBA meeting and speak against it. Okay. We have held a very hard no line on not internally illuminated sign. Backlit signs are fine, externally illuminated signs are fine, but internally illuminated, we have been okay. against. And we're not, we're not spingling you out. We've been yeah. across the board to anybody who's come in. No, we, we're 100% not here to argue with the board. We, and, and, we appreciate and, the feedback. And, we, and we've, you know, town meeting has, uh, we've gone back to town meeting a few times in the last, I don't know how many years, probably, was it, probably a couple, several years ago now, to try to allow larger signs mm -hmm. when, it's, when the buildings are set for the back of the road and everything else. And town meeting is loud and clear. No, they would need, we didn't get a majority. We need two thirds to pass a zoning bylaw chain, and we need to get a majority in our favor. So, you know, we're we're speaking from the will of the town. So part of part of the reason that we say no illuminated signs is that your predecessors, um, even you know the people who owned Mountain Farm Small before WS development, uh, and everybody else on that end of Route Nine, many people on that end of Route Nine went <coughs> overboard. So it was a, a town-wide reaction to prohibit illuminated signs. <clears throat> so it seems unfair that the, the people next to you can have an illuminated sign and you can't, but the reason is there were just too many. So no, understood, again, we're, we're excited about the building. Uh, we think this is gonna bring something great to, the, to Route 9. Um, and we'll definitely, you know, we're gonna work with our tenants and we'll come up with the best design that we can. I couldn't tell you how many people have asking me when is Five Guys going to hold it? <laughs> Soon. So, so if, I were, if I order something from L.L. Beans up in Freeport and it comes down here and doesn't fit, can I return it here? You'd have to ask that. <laughs> That's a good question, though. I so believe so. I'll vote for it. What is your target date? What is your target date? We're hoping to have tenants open fall of this year. Fall of this year? Mm -hmm. That's the goal. Well, they, got this <coughs> the entire complex? Um, I can't comment on that, but we'll definitely we're, we're aiming to have tenants open in fall 2019. We're we're on we're on pace with construction. Everything's going going together smoothly. We're excited. Good. Right, well, I appreciate so, the time. Okay, okay. Look in the bylaw. It'll tell you the square footage, and uh, actually look across the street. That's mm -hmm. that's kind of what and uh, Mr. Crawley would come in. This is what I want for this building. Comes in, we approve it. Fine. It was so when you have the actual sign package, yeah. one that's in, you <coughs> give a final review of that. Yes, yeah. Each individual tenant will, will come in. Yeah. When, when these signs are, are developed, are they going to be all a uniform uh, color, or are they going to be all mixed and match? We have we we review and approve all the tenant signage. Um, we're very strict on how that looks. We have a studio and in, in a team that kind of will review that. Um, and you know we're going to make sure whatever product we put out there is kind of best for us, best for the tenants, and best for the town. One editorial comment we always make when people want bigger signs. And you're too young to remember, but we had Zares, Kmart, uh, Steigers, Wolcos. They had huge illuminated signs. They're no longer in business. It's not the size; it's the product. We agree. It's the quality. Okay. Right. Thank up. you, guys. Have a nice Thank night. Thank you. All right. Nicole Burkhill. Hello. So I'm here on behalf of Berkeley Construction, seeking to get some lots released in the North Sapphire State, which is in North Hadley. Um, this is one-stop shot. Yeah, one-stop shot. So, sorry, they're not for everyone. There we go. So we're looking to have lots 5, 6, and 15 released. Do you have paperwork? Do I have paperwork? Yeah, I do. Okay. That's the important part. <laughs> yeah. um, lots 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 12, and 11 still need to be released from the town. Who's so. again? Lots? 1, 2, 1 through 4, 
Eight. Those are not sold yet? They're not sold yet. So what was the other one? 8 and 11? 8, 12, and 11. Still be at the 11 and 12. Still okay. be released. Those will still be held? Still be yes. held. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. So. So you're releasing the ones that think 5, 6, and 15? Please, yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion to release lots 5, 6, and 15. Five, six, and 15. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? You will put that to the I brought a notary with me, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, is your nickname Nikki? Yeah, Nikki B. So that's, yeah. that's where it comes from. Okay. <laughs> okay. You talked about over 55. Where are you thinking about putting that? I'm not sure. My client's not sure yet. Oh, okay. We Somewhere in Adley? Somewhere in Adley, yeah. Good. Keep them guessing. Yeah, because there is a specific zone right now for that. Okay. okay. <coughs> Basically, the village overlay from the bridge, I believe, to the bike path is the, okay. the only place that currently, and which is a bit of zone on top in Adley. Okay. Um, um, if you can find a other appropriate place, um, I'm not sure where they're looking. Um, mm -hmm. you, you could go for either a zoning variance or go back to town meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's got to be on sewer. Right? On sewer? I think it is. Yeah, everything in the village center overlay district is yeah. on sewer. Yes. Yeah, I don't. I just need the. And then I'm also here on behalf of myself. For property located at, well, and Andrew, uh, property located at 185 Russell Street. We're seeking to change the use from residential to business. We're currently where's, where's 185? Paulson. It's right across from the post office okay. next to Bank Paulson. Oh, oh, Paulson. Did. Okay, yeah. Paulson's office, yes. Okay. Next to the East End. Okay. Yeah. So you need to go to site plan approval mm -hmm. then? Uh, okay. Or, well, or away from site plan approval. I believe that's over a thousand, it's over a thousand square feet. It's. 1,199. Yeah, so you need a site plan approval. Okay. Are you, what are you going to do with that? Law office. Law office. So it's all going to be office? Yeah. And no apartment or anything? It's, no. we have, there's eight spots for parking. Okay. And it's just, we're only renting out two other units. And Andrew, we have an office together. So it's about three offices total. Okay. Yeah, I guess you would need site plan approval to over 1,000 square feet. Okay. Just I mean, it, it may not be a, a monster thing, but that's the formality you'd have to go I through. really don't think it's over a thousand for the space you'd be using, though. Does that include the garage? Because the garage is large, very large. It's a two-car garage. And then there's also, like, an entrance that's part of the garage. So okay. A sunroom. The, 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 perhaps yeah. the easiest thing you could do, just like we told the gentleman that was here before, you would have somebody take a look at it, get the plan drawn up, say this is what you want to do, this is what, this is what we're going to use here, so that if you're under a thousand, we could waive site plan approval. Okay. okay, but we'd like to have it on record that this is such and such and such and such. It would be a lot easier. Okay. And that way it's, you're, you're covered and there's no disagreements down the road that, well, it's, it's this or that or it's that, okay? Okay, so I'm going to come in with a, we're not having any exterior changes. Well, you, you certainly you yeah. can get a building from the site, from the assessor's office. Okay. And it would, and you know what this, you can know the square footage is, so yep. there, it's like, if it's under a thousand, yep. we can waive site plan approval. Okay. If it's a thousand or over, we have to go for site plan approval. Okay. So you could determine on your plan, and then you could divide it out accordingly if, if it's if that's a reasonable number to work with. But you want me to bring you the actual plan? So I was with Tim Nyhart today, and he told me just to come here. So I assume that he knew that it was under a thousand. Oh, he he, he, he sent he sends a lot of people here. Okay. You, know, you know, it's not he he may or may not know. Mm -hmm. However. We need something that says okay. for sure that it is. Yep. Okay. okay. So something on some, paper. from the assessors, uh, maybe there was probably an appraisal telling he purchased it. They we may did. have done yeah. some measurements. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just and, and if you can if you can exclude out the, the garage, you're not going to use that for business purposes. Or the yeah. Then um, then you may be okay. okay. So just yeah. have to verify. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to not pronounce your name right. Para Vistroller? That's right. Oh. 
So I didn't know I have to bring paper for everybody, but basically uh, I run a non-profit that's named Cloazac Animal Sanctuary. We moved here last uh, August, and if you're not familiar where we are, we <coughs> are our large animal at Pulse. I run where the where are you from located? Pulse. I'm looking for having the authorization of putting a sign in the field where are the cows and the goats so people don't misunderstand that no, it's Where Pulse. are you located? 280, where it's Pulse Cafe, where was the bison farm before. Okay. Who's that? The bison farm. The bison farm. You're at the, you're at the bison farm? Yeah. Well, I run the land from the people who own Oh, you the got place. the animals right next door to yes. the bison farm? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, the, like the Is little fenced-in area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. 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 So. Um, so this is a non-profit that has been rescuing animals for 10 years. It's a 501 c 3 non-profit. We rescue animals and we uh, serve the community because we, we have visitors, skids, and if I have phone calls, some we re rescue all type of animals other than dogs. So somebody that loses uh, that find a chicken or a rabbit brings the animals. So that's what we do. <coughs> and of course, some people misunderstand. They believe the animal belongs to Pulse, and they don't. So that's why we'd like to have a sign in the field saying our name, very simple, just our name, Cloazark Animal Sanctuary, with a logo. That's all. This is the size of the sign? Yeah. It's too big. OK, I didn't Six, know. 64, 64 square feet. 64. So um, well, is it a problem that it's long, or? Do you, you want it, me to have it medium size? Like it, it, it does it, we, we don't care big, small, square, otherwise, as long as the sign itself is 64 square feet. This one is 80 square feet. 80 square feet. Okay. Um, the fact that it's not going to be close to the road, does it matter? It no, will be in the middle of the not. We, 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 we tried to make that not a problem before, but like I said, you heard me tell the other gentleman that so if was somebody who set farther from the road, we wanted to allow larger signs, mm -hmm. and town meeting didn't want that. There will be no light. It's just uh, my name. That's right. right. Yeah. So, um, so I have to reduce it. So like so 16 if, feet. If I don't if mind. It's not if done. This, so. If this was 15 feet by 4 feet, you'd be all set. Yeah, that's what I would do. 15 feet by 4. I don't care. It's not printed yet. So. Okay. And it will be a very simple on wood. Um, just for the letter, it's uh, sunrise printing who's going to do. Just the name will be in black on uh, oh material wood. like that, yeah. on wood panel, that's yeah. all. Yeah, that'd be fine. So, so people know it's us and not right. us. The right. right. You've got to get a permit for that for yeah, the building inspector. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure, that's why I came. Right. Yeah, okay, okay. You how how many animals? Inspector, right? that's no. Here. No, who is the big inspector? I have to go to the office. Town yeah. hall. Town hall. What he's kind there. of animals are you, are you going to collect? Any kind? Or no, no, I don't, it's not so being collected. Do we want to vote to approve it at 64 square feet, or do you want to? Do we want to have him come back with the revised plan? If this guy has a heart of gold that he's rescuing animals, I think we can trust him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's thank you. Well, that would be. Um, we, we, I, I wish we stay, for now we'll rent, but we'd like to buy yeah, land, and uh, that's the article of the papers, you know. If he's going to keep this... So you're looking for volunteers to help you? Oh, we have some, yeah. 15 by that, there's like only... My wife would love this. Yeah, she can come. Yeah. Yeah, I make a motion to approve the sign, but not to exceed 64 square feet. Second. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. This is your sign? Yeah. Yeah, building yeah. inspector is in the town hall. Yeah, right. yeah, I went to the office. The woman told me to come tonight. That's why I came. Okay. But, uh, I will ask her the paper. I'm not familiar. There we go. I'm sure. Uh, okay. Okay. You can take the vote. Please. Oh, I'm sorry. We got a motion in a second. Second, yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any polls? Yeah. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. you can keep that up. Oh, yeah, that's your. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's too great. Oh, okay. Good okay. luck to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a question of luck, it's actually love. <laughs> <laughs> we love what we do. Well, you're going to have luck with everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have, thank you. I okay. appreciate it, and we love Adelaide. Right, and that's nice. Thank, thank you. you. Whatever. Thank you. Nicole Blanc? Hi. Do I need to um, stand up there? Can I just talk from here? Well, the, I guess you what do you want to talk about? Yeah. Well, I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to present any uh, uh, planning things. I came. Because I've been away for about five days, and I came home to uh, 
to the Gazette article that um, talked about what happened with Mr. Michalski. And um, I felt compelled to come down here and um, just you know, state for the record that um, how inappropriate I felt your statement was. Um, and I understand that you said that you didn't intend to offend anybody. And whether that's true or not is kind of beside the point. Um, because what was said indeed was very offensive and very racist. And, um, and I think it's imperative that you understand the implications of saying something like that, even if you believe it to be a joke. Just like we don't, we don't, we don't do jokes like that anymore. Those days are gone, and I hope they stay gone. And it's important to learn that what you say matters to people, and even if these people said they weren't offended, you don't really know what they were thinking. They have to um, operate in this town, so we don't know. Um, I don't understand what the joke was, um, but I do understand what the reference to Campbell <coughs> implies. And in this current climate of extreme Islamophobia and racism, um, I think it's really dangerous and um, totally unacceptable. And I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm surprised you haven't apologized. It's actually he just did. very. He did today. Did you? You, you came in late to the meeting, didn't you? He, uh, I he, heard what you said. He, I didn't he, really hear an apology. He, 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 it was he, more. He, it was more to me like he uh, said he didn't feel like he did anything wrong. Mr. Monchkowski specifically said, "I apologize to anybody I offended." It's on tape. Right. Not you can, you can apologize go to apologize for what I said. Uh, to me, it just it, you know semantics, okay. but it means something. So yeah, yeah. I just felt compelled okay. to say for the record, okay. um, as you know, somebody who um, is representing our town and the workings of our town, I just think it's incredibly important to say. Thank, Thank you for your input. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Official moving day is tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, but our next our next, next meeting is going to be in the town hall. Town hall, right? I mean, take advantage of the lull to announce that this is our last meeting at uh, Booker School. Anyway. How many years have you been meeting here? Uh, I'm trying to remember. You were okay. at the town hall. We were right? at the town hall. We've been here for uh, 15 years. 15 years. <laughs> yeah. Was it I, I was in second grade in this room. Mrs. Dam was the teacher. Do you remember what? What year we moved here? We're talking about this being our last meeting. Yes. In Hooker School. Did, when do we move here? That, it was well, the, uh, the original long range plan was being discussed. <coughs> it's been, oh boy, between 12 and 15 years, probably. I gotta say, probably about 12 years, yeah. Yeah, we've been quite a while, actually. Okay, we will open the public hearing. I can get the public notice. Here we go. The Hadley Planning Board will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, March 19, 2019, beginning at 7.15 p.m. in the Hadley Senior Center Meeting Room. The purpose of the hearing is to review the application of DESCO medical equipment for special permits, site plan approval, business use and aquifer, and erosion and sediment control to construct approximately an 8,300 square foot building on Venture Way. Application and plans may be viewed in the town clerk's office during normal business hours, published twice in the Gazette, March 4 and 11. You're up. <coughs> Hi, my name is John Kuhn of Kuhn Little Architects. Good to be here tonight. Um, I'd like to present the folks that are here with me tonight, and then I'd, I'll give you a brief overview of the project, and we'll talk about the site, and then talk about floor plans. Uh, I'm here with Andri Andrea Bordenka. She is the president of Desco. Uh, Eric Nelson, I'm sure you know, uh, from West Mass Development. Bill Cannon, Lake Cannon, landscape architect, and Mark Reed from Heritage Surveys. Uh, a brief overview about the end of 2017. Ms. Bordenka came to our office uh, with her father, 
uh, who's, who founded uh, Desco 45 years ago, and uh, said they were interested in looking to build a building to, to move their business here to this area. It had been started in Norfolk, Mass., uh, but Ms. Bordenka and her family had moved to Belchertown and they were interested in the Amherst area to, to, uh, to build their business and, and, and move their headquarters. So uh, we sent them off to look at various pieces of property, including in Hadley, and they ended up um, working out a deal with, with uh, West Mass Development for the, the uh, West Mass Development Park and the parcel that is unoccupied at the present time. Um, so we were charged with looking to design a building that, and you said 8,300 square feet. The, I think the overall structure in two phases would be a, around 10,000 square feet. This first phase will be 4,000 square feet. And the, the uh, notion they put before us was that they would like to build a building that's 10,000 square feet eventually for their, for their use and, and per, perhaps with some other tenants but only built about half of that at the present time. Um, so currently what we're looking at is a, approximately 4,000 square foot building, which would be phase one, and uh, that would house the DESCO headquarters, and uh, there would be a small space for a, uh, a tenant. Um, so that is what you're looking at tonight. <coughs> the project has already been uh, presented to the Conservation Commission uh, and I think probably the best thing is to talk about the site first. I don't know if Phil or Mark is going to do that presentation. Sure. Uh, do Both of you, it's going to be tandem. tandem. Yes. Yeah, right. Oh yeah. Yep. Uh, and they can tell you what's been going on with this. The one thing we do have to do, uh, which makes sense, is to develop the site. All the, 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 the uh, stormwater management uh, has to be done for the larger building. It doesn't make sense to do you know, a small piece of it now and do more earthwork later. So we're really uh, doing that part of the site work, even for the, for the small portion of the building that we're building now. Uh, it's a one-story building, slab on grade. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, and then I'll come back and talk. Just for the record, sir? Yes. The 8300 comes from the application. Yes. Okay. 3,900 and 29 square foot phase one and a 44 30 square foot phase right. two, so roughly 83, 8,400. So, yeah, I mean, and, and, and if it's 10,000, yeah. it's not the end of the world because we can cover that tonight as long as you let us know what you're going to do. It's a formality. Right. Okay. And the, the second phase, so the first phase is this section of the building, and then this is, so the building is really designed to be, uh, so the second phase can be added easily. And the size of it may, may be massaged a little bit, perhaps at that time when that is done. You know, we'll know a little bit more about what the future holds for that, for the business and for any potential tenants. But okay. Good evening. Um, like I said, my name is Mark Reed from Heritage Surveys. And I would just like to uh, review the site with you all. And as we discussed previously, this is a 14 acre site in which we're only going to develop two acres of it. Site as in that is, I mean, I, I don't, this I don't is the property that they're going to acquire. Oh, okay. That's fine. That's so so the, the boundary lines of the parcel that DESCO will acquire is this entire piece of property from West Mass. Okay. Of which we're only developing about two acres. So is this that, overall plan you know, shows a, a good relationship to to the scope of the land itself and what is actually getting developed. Is that because of that parcel of that parcel that's all this developable? Or yes, really. So in the in the end result, after all these years of this piece of property, um, this is the only portion of the property that's left that could be developed. Over the years, the wetlands have grown. We were before the Conservation Commission last week uh, to present a notice of intent and review by them for the project, and that's an ongoing process that, that we're going to be finishing up at their next meeting in April. Um, but the wetland boundaries have grown considerably from what was originally maintained as farmland and mowed. 
um, it has grown. There are three different stormwater detention basins on the property, which are part of the original subdivision, uh, construction of the roadway and the site itself. Those detentions, do they work for the rest of the building on the project? So, no they don't. Um, these three basins um, are separate from the stormwater system that we're proposing for the building. Um, this plan here is an enlarged plan that shows just our site and what we're developing so that through our project in itself we are proposing another stormwater uh, detention area which would be a pond similar to what's out there now which would be in the back of the Desco building under a full build out. This shows a full like John was mentioning, this is phase one and phase two portion of the building itself um, with associated parking that meets your two to one ratio in, an, in excess of about um, 3,000 square feet extra for your, for your parking requirements. Are you putting any underground storage in, in is it gonna go into that detention pond? It's gonna go into the detention pond. From the underground storage? No, correct. Because of the soil conditions that are out there, they're very height, they're very tight, heavy soils, what clays and silts. Type? Clays and silts. So it can't perk. It won't perk. It will not perk, unfortunately. Yeah. So that the stormwater system for the project gets relatively large when doing that. So if it can't perk there, how can it perk out in the detention pond? So the pond is designed to handle the storm event. Uh, when you do drainage calculations, you do it between the, what is currently running off the property, which the flow of the water right now flows this way towards the wetlands, uh, in this direction. And the size of the basin is sized in such that you won't have an <coughs> increase in the stormwater runoff from the project in itself, between pre-development and post development. Does any of that water that's on that plan gonna end up in those other detention ponds? Uh, it's gonna go into the wetlands so that the runoff from the pond itself will go into these wetlands here. <coughs> um, it may <coughs> eventually get to either one of these two paint, <coughs> these, uh, um, I'm sorry, one of these two detention ponds. Uh, it would be overland flow, sheep flow, um, DEP is encouraging everything to be just spread out and let be vegetated. So the whole project buffer. is a sheet flow? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. There's no structures, stormwater structures, so, um, catch basins or, or any of that so stuff. So there's no oil retention Correct. basins or sediment basins? Everything drains into that pond? There are sediment bases. There's what they call four bays to take care of any of that type of uh, material. Where would they be? So they're located here and here behind the building before it gets discharged into the pond. There is a drainage channel that flows around the building that takes the water from the front parking lot and flows around into what is known as a four bay. That that will take care and settle out those materials. So those bays before. are maintained on a regular basis? Correct. That settlement, what is, what Correct. is there's that? An, there's an What's operation. period you do that? So, so um, under an operation and maintenance project, or uh, plan that is a part of the project in itself, you do uh, inspections four times a year, uh, visual inspections. And then, if needed, <coughs> um, depending on what materials are in there, if you got some sand, or other materials, you remove those um, as needed. Are, those, are they mowed or stuff like that? Are Correct. All, are all the areas around mowed? Correct. Everything is mowed. Okay. Everything is mowed around it. Um, just not the walk. Of course, the water surface is right. not. Um, Does the pond get a that maintenance? Yes, it, it was part of the original submission to the board as our stormwater. It was enough stormwater for application for the project. This is a set of uh, more definitive plans that we have submitted to the board that outlines all the construction related 
um, aspects of it so that um, being a cover sheet Is anyone here from West Mass? Yes. Eric. Eric Nelson's here. I thought. Yes. I almost want to say. Question? Well, not <laughs> a question. <laughs> it's question or comment? No. The fact that you've almost abandoned this property, nothing was done to it. When you get 14 acres and all of a sudden you only have two that is really developable, well, because someone didn't pay attention to the drainage, the flow. Uh, uh, we can't do anything about it now, but it's, a, right. it's an example of benign neglect. Well, but Joe, that's happening throughout the whole town, the whole drainage well, I, system. I, I agree. Well, it, let them answer. Was, is that really why, what happened to it? Well, we've been marketing this and we've had several, as you know, we've been in front of the board several times with potential developments that haven't borne fruit. So, you know, abandonment, I would, I would <coughs> quite agree with abandonment, but parcels like this are a challenge because it is at the low point of the area. The soil conditions have, uh, have its challenges too. So it's one of those things where over time, and I haven't, we, Phil and I talked uh, on the phone and we, you know, this was the 90s when this, uh, this project came on and I've been with West Mass for seven years. So we've been, in the last, you know, years that I've been going, we think we brought a couple of things to the to the board for approval. So, the wetlands have grown. They are a challenge. They're a challenge everywhere because um, you just can't. You're. It's an uphill battle against nature, in a, in a lot of ways. But I agree with you. It's. Um, it, it had potential uh, years ago that um, isn't. This is the best potential that we can get on it today. Yeah, we have to accept what it is, but yeah. right. Okay. Right. Meeting the requirements of the Wetlands Protection Act and the current regulations, which we all know change over the years, and for better or for work, of course. <laughs> so I just wanted to kind of flip through a couple of the pages here to talk about. No, well, Mark, the overall projection that you laid before us, that's for the 10,000 square feet. So Correct. When you come back, you just say, we want to add the uh, site work has been done. done. And so it's not a repeat of the whole site plan approval, but the drainage includes the potential 10,000 square Correct. feet building. Okay. Correct. Okay. And um, all of the site will be prepared for the phase two construction. So that this requires some fill material to be brought in to build this building. It's going to be brought in under phase one. So that all that is needed for is we're requesting from the board an approval of both phases, full build out for the site itself in the stormwater system. And then when the time comes for phase two building construction, we foresee that um, uh, the building inspector could issue a building permit and we come back to the board and say we're ready to go with the phase two building. No changes have been made um, or if there are changes, we'll bring those up to you at that point in time and start building the building. Uh, there won't be any site uh, work relative to that uh, with the exception of actually paving the parking area. Under phase one, we're not going to pave all the parking up front. We're only going to pave the front section. Will you lose between phase one and phase two, whatever that time frame could be, one year to a year to ten years? Will you lose any property by overflow of the wetlands or anything like that? We don't anticipate that. Um, what by are you granting do to prevent that. By granting the permit and the design that we have, we're going to manage the property uh, in such a way that we won't lose it um, and keep those permits active. Conservation Commission, when they approve this project, there's three years in which to build it. Um, if phase two doesn't happen in the three years, we, we can request from the Conservation Commission another two-year extension 
so they get give a little bit more time for that project to get built. Same would apply with the planning board. Planning board is three years. Correct. So, yeah. so, so yes, we want we're cognizant of that, and making sure that um, we can build what we want to do uh, in the now and in the future. So the biggest, <coughs> John mentioned earlier, the biggest hurdle is um, the stormwater system and the pond that's being constructed in here. And we're going through a process, and we're still unfortunately going through the process of working out all the details to make sure that not only um, DEP is satisfied in all the regulations, um, but the peer reviewer who is Doucette Associates is, is satisfied with all the, the concerns that, they, um, that are part of the regulations. The regulations are extensive, and we're trying to be cost um, sensitive and also making sure that it complies with the regulations. Is this project subjected to MS4 regulations? Um, Stormwater drainage. It is, but this design meets those requirements. And we're not connecting um, anything into the city system mm -hmm. with the exception of potentially we're having a discussion back and forth about every 10 years or so, the pond itself has to get <coughs> drained and cleaned if needed. Um, and that has to be drained somewhere. And there is the ability of draining it down to the ponds that you were talking about earlier um, that are further in the back of the property. How long would there be water in a pond? Is it pretty much all the time? Yes. Yeah, the pond, the pond would be a pond. How deep? So it's three feet deep. Is there a fence around it? Yes, there is. There's going to be. There will be a fence around fence. it. Yes. In the dry weather, it could evaporate? We don't feel it will because of the heavy soils. Okay. And what we've seen across the street with American River and that stormwater system, um, for the most part, because of the soils. Well, American River put it in just recently, and last year was no year to evaporate anything. Correct. Yeah, right. The year prior to that. So it was the still cat wet. Cattails and all that is going to grow out of there and not no. stay so, so cattails will not grow out of the pond area itself because it's too deep. The water's too deep. Cattails will so only the edge of it? at the edge of it. There, there will be plantings, uh, what they call an aquatic shelf, ten foot wide. There's plantings so that there will be a variety of, of vegetation planted in that area. Will they be maintained? So yes. They don't go wild or go high or what? Correct. That's part of the program that is being proposed. There's going to be a regular maintenance program on that? Yes. For the season? There, there will have to be in order to keep the, the, uh, the pond working correctly for the stormwater management of the whole site. Other parts of the plan are, are again, construction related activities. We, we do have, you know, of course, sewer and water. What we had talked about um, prior to, or at our last meeting, um, is the ability of getting uh, gas service to the building. Um, I heard a rumor the other day in Springfield at a meeting that they're thinking about lifting it. I don't know if they are. That's a heck it, of a rumor. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, wow. Yeah. That's a nasty rumor. <laughs> So, That's a wild so, rumor. Yeah. So let's hope so. It's probably it's probably in Springfield only, right? And not up in our area. Um, so that we are proposing propane tank that's going to be installed back here underground to, or to or serve or above ground. Above ground. Above ground. And we, we know we have to go between before the fire chief or fire department and the select board for approval of that yes. tank. Yes. You mentioned sewer. Yes. I know there's a pump station right there. Is that going to be gravity or injection pump? No, it's gravity system. So there's a sewer manhole out in the street, and there's the ability of gravity flow to the sewer manhole down to right here is the pump station. It's a lot cheaper to maintain. Yes, yes. Um, there will be uh, both domestic and uh, fire because under phase two of the building, it puts it over the requirement. It has to be sprinkler. So we have both domestic and fire uh, connection to the building for future. 
Do, are they making you put a grease trap or anything in there to store it? No. There is really not the ability because there's no <coughs> facility in it. Right. There's, yeah. There's no need of. Yeah, right. There's no kitchen. There's no commercial kitchen or or any of that aspect of it. Um, part of the, the the plans are a lighting plan to make sure it complies with um, keeping the lighting on the site and not spilling out to the abutting properties and or street. Um, all the lighting poles will be shielded. Um, so any lighting will shoot up in the air? No. no. Kind of like fixtures. The shoe box. Good. The there's a, there's a, a detail on the plans that illustrate the, the type of fixture that we're, right. we, uh, yeah. we we specified. Like the shoe box style. Yes. Pardon? We like the shoe box Yeah, it's style. got, it, it's, it's what I call a hooded well, type of fixture. It's box. got a solid roof to it so that okay. uh, the light casts directly down and is controlled uh, to direct it onto the pavement so we can preserve the, the dark sky uh, uh, right. emittance and everything else. There's about, there's five light fixtures we're proposing in the parking lot in phase one and five light fixtures that we'll be putting along the parking lot in phase two. And uh, the light fixtures, the, the poles will be 15 feet high to comply with the zoning. So they're not big, you know, big. Just out of curiosity, kind of light, light itself. The uh, light itself, we have specified a, um, their LED lights, 150 uh, watts. In, in terms of LED, they're, you know, it's a different kind of uh, nomenclature they use where it's uh, like 3,500 lumens and everything else. Yeah. But um, we were requested by Western Mass to spec out a, uh, a light emittance that's kind of a warmer glow type of effect rather than the bright, stark white color. So, uh, so that so, so that information color, is on the, the plan. The color is going to be different than most other ones. Well, it yeah, it it's a fairly isolated site, so it's not going to kind of you know conflict with uh, other light uh, around. There's quite a distance between parking areas and everything else. But it'll be a warmer, more sensitive, softer type of uh, light emittance uh, from uh, the light fixtures. Well, the lights. Turn on and dust. And, and They'll all be photo celled. They'll all be photo celled, so, so they will. So just in the dark. That's all. Correct. As yeah. soon as light comes, they automatically yeah. shut down. Right. Right. Unless there, you know, there, there's night activity, which they can put, they can uh, have manual override on uh, for keeping the lights on when there is some night activity going on. So park. at night, they're not going to be on. They, they will be for the use uh, uh, of the building. If somebody's using the building at night, yes, they will be. So but everything is activated around the use of the building? Correct. There will be security lighting, of course, um, that will be on all night long. Though. Yeah, there's no point in having the lights on all night long and everything else if there's nothing going on, you know, so. Right. Well, we're at that, excuse me. What does DESCO do? I know yeah, the medical that was my question. question. Yeah. Yeah. It, it stands for Diagnostic uh, Equipment Service Corporation. And they service uh, diagnostic type equipment in hospitals and doctors' okay. offices. So they don't actually make anything, they're more of a service company? Exactly. Okay. And they also tra they train individuals to, to work on that equipment. So there's a there's a training room, if you will, okay. for that type of thing. There's only five or so employees in, in this in this location, but they have uh, employees all over the, uh, they have what, nine states, I 15. think, from Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Maybe you could. Yeah, so we operate in 15 states. Um, so this is mostly for our customer service reps, our dispatchers, who when um, an OR table breaks, they call the office and the dispatchers will dispatch the specialist to go to that particular site. So we're in anywhere from, you know, two to five hospitals or surgery centers per tech per, per day. So like John mentioned, there's a, a space, a workshop space where we're going to have equipment like EKGs and defibrillators um, to, to offer training to new employees, but we're also in a conversation with Springfield Technical Community College and some of the local schools to um, help their students have some hands-on technical experience in this facility as well. So that's why we're thinking in you know five years or so, the phase two and just being ready to, to build out and doing everything that we can because 
there's just so many opportunities in this area for us to increase the visibility of what we do um, and also partner with a lot of the local schools and businesses to, to um, utilize the space. So you're a very high-end service company. Yeah. That's yeah. You, you it's a good way of putting it. It is, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, that's not something you're going to send, you know, it's, it's, you're not, you know, the tools are unique. Yes. Do you guys offer anything to, like, to the local uh, fire department, EMT paramedics in the community? We don't yet, but we are open to those types of collaborations, absolutely. That because they like have, a good idea to me. yeah, it does sound like we just hired someone who is the chief at the, um, uh, is it Montague um, Fire Department? So he's actually going to be one of our customer service reps. So I can have a conversation with him about it. That's a great idea. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, Part of this is a landscape plan that Bill prepared, um, and he can speak to that if you have any questions on it. It's part of the application. Um, there'll be a series of trees and plantings throughout the site um, that are required. Yeah, just, just kind of highlights on that. Yeah, just briefly, uh, you, you can see on this plan right in here where. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm yep. kind of... Joe, hey, gentlemen, please, yep. stay on one topic at a time. You can ask the question otherwise. I, I think of this plan right in here, because of the color differentiations, you can kind of, it's, it kind of illustrates what we're talking about for new plantings, which are highlighted in the, in the uh, bright green color. So we've introduced uh, some uh, woody plant material into the site for uh, uh, shade trees. Uh, native shade trees that we're going to be putting in islands in the parking lots and around the building. Uh, also, uh, uh, native shrub plantings, which will be uh, al along the uh, front of the building, foundation of the building, and we've also, I've also kind of uh, 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 located in some areas uh, some uh, some uh, daylily plantings and everything else uh, to create kind of a na very naturalistic. Uh, type of setting uh, for this development. Um, just to get ahead of myself a little bit, you can kind of see by the architectural drawing that's on the floor there that it's a one-story building. It's it, it's it's um, it, I, I I had designed that the landscape and it's to kind of marry in with the scale of this building. It's you know because it's not brick or um, uh, any kind of formal material and everything else. It's this is uh, the atmosphere that we're trying to create here um, is a lot more relaxed and, and kind of in keeping uh, with uh, Desco's uh, 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 working environment. I mean, we've even included uh, in the back of the phase one building an outdoor sitting area uh, so that they could kind of have outdoor classes uh, and everything else too. Um, so that, that's shown on the plan as well. Uh, but uh, just that in general, that's what we're kind of talking about. Now we've also, Mark mentioned something, we're, we'll be introducing new plantings into the stormwater management plan as well. We've created uh, and designed uh, uh, plantings to work in with the, uh, the, uh, uh, the pond, uh, the stormwater uh, pond uh, for the site. Uh, we have a series of, uh, of long, elongated uh, swales that will convey the runoff from the parking lots uh, to the detention uh, basin area. And uh, we've spec out, uh, specified uh, some growing medium uh, to be installed in the bottom of those swales that'll enhance uh, 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 growth of uh, grassy uh, grasses. Um, and we're, we've even, I've even uh, specced out a, a mix of grass um, uh, with a little blue stem in it, will, which will uh, be of a, a plant type, the higher knee high type of planting that I think will have a nice contrast with some of the more higher main maintenance uh, type of lawn areas uh, and add some visual interest uh, to the site as well. So that, that's basically kind of what we're, we're thinking about doing with uh, the landscaping uh, for uh, the, the site. Where is your uh, snow storage? 
And what do you do, if anything, with the salt that you use to melt? Right. So the plans, the site plans show different areas on the site for salt storage, and it is on sheet. Um, sheet L 3.0. We have areas um, for snow storage on either side of the end of the parking, envisioning that snow plowing activities would be plowing in this direction, so that snow plow or snow storage areas are located here. We have a snow storage area located on this side, as well as in the back of the this parking area that's off the parking lot correct it's off in the in the lawn area is, is the con conservation commission making you do anything to treat the salt that's going to go in there that you're going to use in the parking lot uh, right now it's all going to be going into vegetated areas that will treat it before it ever gets down into the pond so um, and through that process so none of the snow, snow is going to take up any parking Correct. As of right now, and it all is weather dependent on a different... Uh, and even as it's built out in its capacity? Right. We, we envision trying to maintain the parking spaces um, needed. As mentioned, we have, you know, five employees. Um, we have an awful lot of parking spaces that are available right. so that um, if needed, if we have an extreme winter like we had a couple of years ago, some of that will have to be moved as needed. But the way it is without a lot right. of employees there, they, you got plenty of room there. Correct. Without doing anything. Yep. Yeah, the way, the way we've calculated out the parking, the way the parking ratio has turned out, because of your requirement uh, for the parking to be twice the area of the building, uh, uh, we, have, we show 55 parking spaces. 22 of which are in the first phase, and as we've previously mentioned, uh, you know, probably have about four or five employees for the desk or part of it. Um, I, they, they won't be occupying this whole building in phase one. They may be sharing that a little bit, so there's additional parking for uh, an, a, a secondary uh, tenant to uh, utilize that phase one parking. So that, that comes out, it's, so with that 55 parking spaces, there's three handicapped parking spaces. Um, that calculates out to one space per 150 square feet, which uh, based on what I do for plan and everything else is, um, is, a, is pretty commodious. It's a, that's a lot of parking. Usually you're in the, the one, one space per 200 or 300 uh, square feet uh, for a building. So we really feel we have more than adequate number of parking spaces to service this building. You realize that if you don't need them, you don't really want to put them in, you don't have to. Right. You can, okay. in other words, you need to design for the two for one. Right. Well, let's say you're putting in, you know, 55, just news number, 55 parking spaces. If you feel you only need 40, you can only put in 40, yeah. and you can just put the others as reserves and use it as greens, just Make it grass. That that may it, it may come, but uh, not knowing where we're coming with tenant require future tenant requirements right. or anything else, we don't know where that would come. So, like like we've done with the site for the phase one and phase two, and the the, the stormwater management plan, we've done so with the parking. I, I think that would be great if we don't need all the parking. You know why pave it all and everything else, and, and we could kind of devote it to uh, more open space. But right. certainly help out with the impact on the stormwater management uh, side of things. But for the first phase, I think 22 spaces yeah. is a I'm, I'm just making that yeah. comment. I'm not, I'm not trying to give you direction. Yeah. I'm saying that it's yeah. not unusual for a company that says we really don't need X number of spaces. Right. We only need so much. Yeah. Then design for it, yeah. but don't put it in, yeah. and just leave it as grass or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. I, I think that's a, that's a great thought, and 
uh, that may be pursued. Okay. Again, yes. it's going to be all depending on Jim, you know what some of the tenant space as well. Yeah. You may be misconstruing what Jim has said. You still have to calculate the drainage as if the full parking were there. Yes, and we've done that. Yes, we've done that. Right. And, and, and yes, we've and done that. that. Right. The re the re no, we've done it. We've done it on the 55 cars, which is right. what the requirement yeah. that meets all your requirements. Yeah. The, re the reason for that is buildings that have the one day it's a it's an auto park shop, and next day it's a restaurant that overwhelms the parking. Yeah. So and so we, we have <clears throat> a, a flat saying a flat statement two for one sometimes it's more than enough and sometimes it's barely enough yeah. <laughs> so you know the uses change it's it is the nature of the business right, right. And, and you know we, we were concerned about designing for in this case yeah you've got a, a light customer base and light parking use and yeah you're in a little bit of a different area I, I'm not going <coughs> to disagree with that where you probably would be putting a restaurant down there but uh, other places along Route 9, you can see where we're coming from. Sure, sure. Are you yeah. guys going to put any restrictions on a secondary tenant? Like if it's going to be all medical or it's going to be anything? Well, uh, maybe Andrea could speak to the, the tenant that, it, that you do have in here. Yeah, so there is, um, it's about a 300 square foot area for the tenant space, and she runs a performance, uh, peak performance coaching. So she works with athletes, um, and she works with um, people of all ages, kids and adults as well. So she's going to be using that space for her um, her coaching and her um, consulting. So I'm not. I mean, ideally, I have people who are, you know, there's some kind of complementary. We can collaborate together in some way, but it's not a deal breaker. I'm open. Well, we, 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 you, it was clear when, we, when Mark and I approached you way in the beginning that any, any future tenants would be subject to, you know, coming before the planning board and being approved by you guys. Because it's any act. Yes. Well. Yeah. And obviously coaching is not a <laughs> <laughs> right. The other part of the plans within here are construction related. Um, and then at the end of the set, are the building plans that I can let John show you the building at this point? Yep. If there, unless there's other questions we, from the we, board. The construction plan we're not really. Yes. It's more for the building bank. We'd like to see yeah. that one. So I'll let John uh, take it from here. Uh, before, <clears throat> before I get into the floor plans, I want to make, mention two other site related things. One is that um, the building's going to be constructed by uh, Tagno Construction in, in Amherst. And uh, we are looking currently at uh, two options for heating and cooling the building. One is propane, but the other would be solar and electric. Um, so if we end up going that route, then we won't need the uh, propane tank here. So I'm just mentioning that. <clears throat> and the second thing is, the first phase of the building isn't large enough that it requires a sprinkler, but once an addition is put on and the building is over 7,500 square feet, it would need to be a sprinkler. So we will be bringing a sprinkler line in now and probably stubbing it right here so that should they build phase two, they don't have to rip up the whole thing to, to put the, the sprinkler line in. So that will be done as part of phase one. What's that, an eight inch line? Probably a six. So are you putting sprinklers in phase one? No. We'll put, we'll retrofit them at that time. It's a six inch, it's shown as a six inch line coming in. Uh, if you put, if you put solar, will it be on a roof or on the ground? It will be on the roof. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a simple building for me. Um, so the floor plan, uh, this is, this is facing the street. And this is the front entrance right here. It's a vestibule. This is sort of an entrance lobby. And the tenant that uh, Andrea was talking about is right here. She's got a little vestibule in an office. And there's a small kitchenette that's open to kind of to the public area. And then this hallway comes down to the, the, this meeting room that we were talking about. And this is where phase two would go so that this hallway here would become the, the connection to the second phase. So Desco is occupying this area here. They have a, a, a loading area right here. This is the workshop that Andrea was talking about. Uh, there's two bathrooms, a conference room, her office, and then room for four other employees. And then this common meeting room 
uh, is where she would have training facilities. This door leads out to the outdoor uh, meeting area that uh, uh, Bill spoke about. And then this area could also be used for the tenant. So they would have to coordinate timing, but that would allow Desco to be closed and the tenant to come in and, and you do her training in here and have people so that the building can be used at various times of the day. They obviously have to coordinate <coughs> when this space is used, but the bathrooms are right here for that. So this public space can be open while <coughs> this is closed. Uh, it's uh, one story, as we've mentioned. The exterior, we, we really designed this to have sort of a, a, the tobacco barn, I guess, would be sort of the building prototype that we started with and the basic proportions of that. Uh, it's gonna have a hardy plank siding that's red, black windows, and then a, an appropriate uh, shingle roof. Uh, I think it's a very clean looking building. Uh, it will not have an internally lit sign, I can tell you that. It will just, it has a wood sign here with, with three lights over it. And I think there's a sign out by the, by the road as well. <coughs> that's like a little style yeah, store. That's what it reminds me of. Good. It's, it's definitely different. Look. I mean, I'm not. I like the look. I'm not. I don't mean to criticize it at all. But it's just. A, it's a. It's a very different look than we're used to for any kind of a business or industrial use, for sure. Yeah. Well, that's what the, the client asked for, and uh, we felt it was. The only thing you're missing that is a cupola. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> there we go. Right. That was going to get you. You were waiting for that. <laughs> Tobacco prices, we did going with, tobacco prices keep going where they're going. You might want to put phase two now. Uh, now uh, so. That's cigar tobacco. <clears throat> so I think that's the thrust of our presentation. Yeah. We're happy to answer any other questions you might have. So John mentioned the, the uh, uh, a, a secondary site out on the site. It's it is shown on the site plans. It's along the driveway, and what we pictured it is just strictly kind of an address number, uh, it would be 200 uh, on there. Uh, not Nothing, you know, showy with, you know, big long, elongated signs or any of that type of stuff. Once you get the sign design, just come back. We'll approve it, except for the sign to come back. It's strictly, yeah. When you, when, you, when, you, when you get the design, we'll just come in as a matter of the informal session leader. That, that, if there's a detail that's shown on the plans is the way we currently have envisioned it. If it's going to change, we'll come back to the plan. Okay. Okay, so do we have a final peer review letter on this one? We do not. Um, we're in the process of working out the final details that we set. Um, so unfortunately tonight we do not have a, a peer review letter. So we would ask to be, uh, Continue to your meeting, your next meeting. We're, we're approved as a condition for <clears throat> with that as well. That's, we I knew that was good. Cool. <laughs> we usually I don't, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really like way. doing it. I like to see what's on paper before we yes. put the final stamp to it. Yeah. We've got a mighty busy agenda for the next meeting. That's the only problem. Or do you know the, do you know the on that letter? We could, we could do it in a, in a month from now. Next, the third meeting, yeah, third meeting, the third Tuesday in April. But this meeting in the first, the first meeting in Tuesday, the first meeting in April, we only have three public hearings, and two of them are going to be lengthy. One concern we do have is um, we'd like to get in the ground soon, as, as you can imagine. And uh, I assume there'll be some sort of appeal period, 20-day appeal period, when, when after the, the signing of the... After the after the issuing of the uh, special permit that right. is written up. After it's recorded with the town clerk. Right. right. So. And that wouldn't happen at the next meeting. That you'd have to wait until the... That, that, that's call. typically up to a week or so afterward to get it typed up and everything. We, we vote it at the meeting. So we don't have to bring it back for a further. We'll, we'll close, we can close the public hearing and vote if we are ready. Are you guys all done with the, the com, com No, we, um, we will, they continued their meeting uh, until their next meeting, which is April 9th. 9th is their next Conservation Commission meeting. So that we anticipate being approved at that meeting okay, on the 9th. That's the second Tuesday of April. Correct. 
So if you came back on a third Tuesday, one week later, with everything, including a concom, we could give you an approval at that point. Sixteen. That'll work out for you guys. Don't say no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say no. So, okay, uh, that was a question I had, is that the planning board would like to have conservation approval before you approve? No. Not necessarily. Not necessarily, okay. Not necessarily. Okay, we, we, but we, I understand your meeting on the second is yeah. full. We, uh, we do coordinate to some extent with the Conservation Commission, so uh, uh, they, would, uh, they would tell us what, uh, what needed to be looked at and uh, they can give us an idea of how much they think they right. have. The, at the last meeting with the Conservation Commission, um, they had no other issues with the project, uh, just waiting for the final um, review from Doucette. Would they have their determination written out for our, our meeting following? Uh, <coughs> they meet the week before? I believe that their decisions are written up to be signed by all, by each member of the board. So hmm. even if they have voted it, they won't have it ready. But Janice can, Stone can tell me what it is going to be. Right. right. Uh, she can provide a, a, a sample, perhaps. Um, we, on the other hand, take the vote, and then I, as clerk, certify that this is the vote that was taken. Okay. So it doesn't need to be signed by everyone. But once we vote, Bill gets it written up, he signs it, goes to the town clerk for filing, and then if the, the, the 20 day start comes, starts okay. to count. So just to be clear, you're talking of continuance of this public hearing to the 16th of April. Correct. Okay. And Mark, do we have time? Do we have a timeline on the peer review? Will they? Will the peer review letter be done in, in plenty of time for the yes. April 9th meeting? Yes, it, it will be. Um, we hope so to. That work? That, that yeah, work? yes. Okay. Uh, we, we hope to have that within a week or two. Um, there are some minor um, uh, caveats to the DEP stormwater management regulations that we're working out, um, and that's the only. Shortfall or pickup right now. Okay. Trying so to get through those. Seven o'clock, seven fifteen. Seven fifteen, and it'll be just like tonight. We the public session. And as soon as we're done talking with people, we get right into yours. Okay. So, do you have any other concerns aside from the period? No, I mean you've done a wonderful job of presenting, and everything is in order. And if you had the peer review letter, you'd be walking away with a an approval tonight. But unfortunately, the Reviewing engineers are what they are. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank you. One sixteen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. a parking lot for the proposed apartment complex in Amherst that the parking would be in Hadley. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. evidently that was appealed. Behind the mar medical marijuana place. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That was appealed. We didn't know that. I didn't know that it was appealed. Did you know it was appealed, Bill? Yeah, I knew it had been appealed, but it was primarily the apartment complex that was being appealed. Right, so. but, but somehow, because we have the parking for it, we got Thank the, you, tonight. we didn't have much about we didn't have anything to do with the appeal, but we were involved in it because they're they're together. They're the one project. What, what's the name of it? Um, where is that? The uh, clue that we're playing Lancaster. I saw the name. Uh, Asper Heights. A S P E N Heights. They appealed what? Hadley's. They, no, they appealed the issuance of the special permit to the town of from the town of Amherst. Yeah. And. Hours. And hours yeah. because we have the, the, the parking is part of the project. But the town, as far as I know, Joel was pretty much just an old by the way. I don't know that we had, I don't know if we 
I don't know if the town spent much of any money defending it because there was nothing to defend. It was all about the town of Amherst. Anyways, getting back to Joel's comment, um, he simply was informing us um, that the above litigation for the planning board, um, this matter is very likely going to be remanded to the board in the near future. This is the appeal by and abutter for the planning board's approval of <coughs> the limited part of the so-called Aspen Heights project, most of which is in Amherst. This morning I participated in a telephone status conference with counsel for all parties. Counsel for the plaintiff and the developer reported they have resolved their differences and they propose to have the case remanded to the Halley Planning Board and the Amherst ZBA to present modifications to the plan. I did not have any information to the proposed, on the proposed changes. Um, the court welcomed the report, judge yada yada yada, and so basically Joel is saying when he knows more or they'll, they'll come back to us, he'll let us know. So he said they're probably, oh we're going to only have 45 days from the date that they come to make, <coughs> make the request to, I guess we're going to hold a new public hearing? Probably. And so we're going to advertise it <coughs> and notify the abutters. And we'll have to do that within 45 days of the uh, time that they come to see us. And that was a real nuisance because there are they notify the, the abutters are the condo owners, the, uh, condo mm -hmm. owners for uh, yeah. Greenleaf. There was, I believe, 90. There was three pages. 30. Well, six, nine, yes, there was. There was 90. There was 90 abutters to the project because there was three. Um, of those uh, uh, mailing labels, and there's 30 mailing labels on the sheet, and there was three sheets of them. It was like, and I got to think, I thought there was, you know, I thought there was enough for, typically they give us two, and so I was going <clears> to, <throat> you know, okay, half of these are bills, I'm looking at them, I said, wait a minute, these are all different addresses. It took, there was a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, envelopes going out for that one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Isn't and that kind of tight time to get all the stuff the done? Originally, you were only going to give us 30 days. Oh, and the town, Joel, Joel got them to agree to 45 days. Yes, it is tight. That's why I'm saying when it comes in, we have 45 days to hold the public hearing and schedule it. Schedule it and when hold will it. That come, will that come in on, a, on one of our meetings or not? Or we miss it and then you lose? Well, whenever it comes of, in, Jim can send out, you know, just pick a date and send out the legal notices. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming they're going to come to a, come at one of the regular meetings and apply and hopefully, you know, that's, a, that's a concern I have to make sure that we, we're within well, the 45 days. Can we, can we make a motion if he gets it, he's going to get, get the mailings out, that's the key thing. Yeah. Get, can get, we just well, authorize sure. it to do it? Yeah, we don't need a meeting to authorize Jim to, to get the mailings out. Yeah, we don't okay. need a motion. Uh, no. Would, I expect that we'll be coordinating. Tom Reedy was the attorney for the project, okay, so right. uh, I'm he sure yeah. he is interested in keeping this on track. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Tom knows how to get a hold of either one of all of us. Who was the attorney yeah. for yeah. the people of Haley? Uh, it was, I think it was Co Colligan versus Planning Board Landcourt. Okay. When did you get that? Um, we got this on Tuesday. We got this. When did we get this? We just got this a couple of days ago. Yesterday, yesterday. Monday. Yeah. We got this yesterday. Well, I would hope that you. Do we have that? You, did you give it to the rest of the board or not? No, they just sent it out to us. I was going to bring it to light and read, but I can I can forward a copy to everybody. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to read that kind of okay. stuff. Well, here. All right. Okay. I like reading the lawyer stuff. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> right. Oh. <coughs> Okay, um, the fire substation is asked to be moved to 4-2, which is one of the busy ones. And the next one is the executive session. Executive session. Do we have anything we want to do? We just, well, oh, um, we did get some comments from a from Shell Horowitz on some comments on the planning, on the uh, medical, not the medical, the adult use marijuana. Some of them I think make sense. I was going to incorporate them. Um, however, there were a couple here that I had a question on. He asked, he's making a suggestion that we add pre-K 
to the K through 12. I thought that was a pretty good idea. Mm -hmm. So I will add that. What's that for? This is medical, the, the adult use marijuana. He made a few comments on a few different sections that, you know. Pre-K what, to not to be close? No, to not to be close. Right now we got a, that a medical marijuana facility can't be close to the wedding. It's 500 feet to a K through 12. He suggested we add pre-K. Why don't you just but put it, all educational? Well, that's, all include all. Well, you know, no, but there was a limitation in the state recommendations. You, it means this, but not that. Not nurse. Well, we, we added we, we added her, we added a registered um, daycare center to the to the to that list, and we're. I'm just asking the the board. Do they think we should add pre-K instead of K through 12? Should it be pre-K through 12? Well, why not? Yes, yeah, I, I don't see, I don't see a problem with that. Yeah, sure. You know. Right. Then he had two other areas that we have that if the facility changes managers or something happens that they have, they have to do something within a certain time frame. And he says, should there be an out clause for an emergency, for example, an accident or illness or firing for cause? And that, that applied to two different sections. That's I, I, I just thinking that that kind of might be splitting here, but I'm not doesn't sure. Doesn't the state law cover all that? Well, that, that's, that's kind of, we're, we're duplicating the state law in, in many instances in that. Right. But that, it yeah, I, wouldn't that I, I don't think I would worry about okay. that. Okay. No, no. All right. It's, it's probably a rare. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. I Jim, really what's the regulation on uh, him? The only him. The For, reg I believe the regulation on him is that they need to notify the Board of Selectmen. I'm not positive on this. The Board of Selectmen, the police chief, that they are going to grow hemp and they get some kind of a state permit. So we have nothing to do with issuing a permit? No, not on him. Okay. Hump is, hump, even though it's related to marijuana, yeah. it's a different, it's a, hemp is an agriculture, considered an agricultural crop, to what I understand. I just seen some advertised for aches and pains with hemp. There's a, there's a place as you go, you know where Five Corners is in Granby? Yeah. As you go, I think it's West Street or East Street that you get on when you go, you take that left to go out towards Ludlow and Granby. Mm -hmm. There's a fence on the right hand side that's got these, there's three signs that about this is a U.S. government something or other um, Department of Agriculture. There's a hemp, there's a, there's a about hemp growing hemp on that property. Yeah. And wherever I drive by it, I'm, I mean, it's, it's I never noticed. I mean, I wouldn't know hemp if it's still, if it's still next to me, but uh, evidently they grow hemp there, and it's just a notification that they grow hemp. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, do I uh, go to the executive session? Executive session. What just about talking this? about our minutes? Oh yes, we have okay. some minutes approved. We have what we have our Mr. John. So I I would like to work with John on the. Um, on the formatting a little more. Um, I don't think that this, um, and I wish he was here, I, I don't think this is uh, ready to be voted on, so, but no. it is, um, you know, he, it's a good start. he and I have been emailing, and um, right. I'm going to. Well, why can't he just give him a sample of the many I see John. It, right. And just, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying this is not ready to be yeah. voted. No, it's, right. As okay. you pointed out, it, it doesn't have who was here and everything. Yeah. So I, I assume he's got a couple absents here. I assume that's me, and I was here to vote on those particular things. Okay. Okay. Melissa Teff, Phil O'Brien. He's got me the absent. I just, I just had to excuse myself from the. Uh, okay. So yeah, there's some, some terminology some stuff. So problems. yeah, they're not ready. Right. You know, I, I will work with John. Okay. And we will, we will get that edited. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So I make this a motion. Okay. Well, uh, so you have, I have the, I have the whole thing. So the agenda item is. Um, an executive session. <laughs> for the purposes of discussing a complaint brought against a public officer. Um, so let me fill in some of this stuff. Uh, three, 
19. Um, I will make a motion uh, <coughs> that the planning board enter into executive session for the purposes of discussing complaint. And the question is, will we or will we not convene, reconvene an open session? I think we'll reconvene. And to convene an open session. So that is the motion. Why are we going to reconvene? Just to let people know what we oh, said. Okay. If okay, okay, I got you. Okay. Okay, so that's the motion. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Um, roll call vote. Maximoski. Yes. Dwyer. Yes. Zagradnik. Yes. Sarzinski. Yes. Michikoski. Abstain. Does that mean you do not want to go into open session no, I don't know or executive session? I don't know what you're going really to what it's for. He wants to abstain. Okay. Do you, okay, I just want to be clear that I just want to be very clear. You're you're abstaining on the vote to go into executive session, but you are not asking that. I'm not voting against. Not okay. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. As chairman of the Hadley Planning Board, I publicly publicly state one that there has been a motion made and seconded to enter into executive session. Two, that the planning board has voted to enter into executive session. Three, that the purpose for executive session is to discuss a complaint about an elected official. Four, that the discussion in open session would have a detrimental effect on a planning board litigation position. And five, that the planning board will con reconvene an open session. Okay. Okay. We will be go to our room and we will be back. The planning board met in executive session and we have the following statements. We as a board regret that comments made by one member of the planning board may have given the impression that our board would not give a fair hearing to, mat to any matter before us. This is not who we are. We have no other comments. That's it. You know, I just mentioned for those who tuned in late oh. that Mr. Michikoski did make a statement at the beginning. That he did apologize for his comments. Did anybody that he offended, he did not mean to do it, and he apologized. And if you're on YouTube, go to the beginning of the YouTube tape and you'll see that. Any other board? Any other business? Well, we're is, here. is John all cleared with the minutes? Oh, John's going to, Bill's going to get in touch with you for the, uh, yeah, we're going to work on formatting of the minutes and some things. That I heard you from downstairs. Okay. Sorry, I missed that. Okay, that's so, fine. Yeah, we appreciate yeah. as much as you've done so far. It yeah. looks good. Yeah, okay. good start. Good. good. Thank you. you have a Are we going to authorize him to continue doing the minutes now? If Bill gives him the format, why we, is he going to wait? I think we did minute? vote to do three, three months. Three months, or three sessions. So yeah, three. there are two more sessions that we've already voted to do. Yeah. We'll work on that. I'll work on that with John. Okay. okay. Will we adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you, and thank you, John. Is it we still on? <coughs> can be. Can you put us still on? Just one, I just want to make one comment. Yeah. That this is our last meeting in the senior center. Beginning the first meeting in April, all of our meetings, the planning board meetings will be in the second floor of the town hall. Okay, that's all. <laughs>